This is One on One. For decades, children had no idea that there was a river in the community. The senior citizens knew there was a river because they swam in it. Riverfront Park is a brand new park running right along the Passaic River. It is the first time in decades that the community has been able to access the river and the waterfront for recreational uses. It has a boardwalk, beautiful orange color, walking paths that people can go on with baby carriages and skateboards and bikes. There's a great story behind that, and the gentleman you're seeing on camera is going to tell you. He's Anthony Akuki, and he's the New Jersey State Director of the Trust for Public Land. How are you doing, Anthony? I'm well, Steve, thanks. Tell folks what we were just looking at. Well, Newark Riverfront Park uh, is one of more than a dozen uh, public park projects that the Trust for Public Land has helped to create in Newark. And, and what you saw there was just the first phase of a much larger uh, riverfront-wide greenway that the city of Newark is in the process of developing. Now, again, that was along what river? The Passaic River, <laughs> the, uh, the, the river on which the city of Newark was founded back in, way back when in the back 1600s. In the day. Really back in the day. Exactly. People thought that wouldn't happen. And it looks like that. It's a, yeah, amazing. Many people said it, it uh, wouldn't happen, uh, but there have been dreams for many decades to establish a new greenway and to convert what was an industrial contaminated riverfront into an amenity for the people of Newark. And so that work is now happening. And describe what's there for people. Uh, well, the first phase of, of Newark Riverfront Park, uh, about three and a half acres, is developed, uh, led by the Trust for Public Land. It encompasses about three acres of land, and it's the first phase of a much larger 20-plus uh, acre um, park system that right. is under, under design and, and development now. And so what is the Horizon Wellness Trail? Well, you know, interestingly, Steve, you know, the, 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 in, the need for park space uh, in Newark and cities across the country really is to accomplish many community benefits. You know, if, if from, on the one hand, Newark Riverfront Park, there's an economic development component to it. So as the riverfront is converted from a contaminated, um, underutilized brownfield into green space, it's enhancing uh, the downtown Newark for, for um, businesses. And so the city's really excited about the economic development component of it. But equally important is the health benefits of right. park space. You know, there's um, an obesity epidemic. There are other, many other uh, uh, diseases associated with inactivity, in, uh, particularly uh, uh, acute in cities and underserved communities. And so one way to address that is through the creation of parks that promote physical activity. And so thanks to support from the Horizon Foundation, um, the Healthcare Foundation uh, for New Jersey, um, Prudential, other, other uh, private Foundation funders, PSEG, well. you know, <clears throat> a long list of of uh, corporate and philanthropic institutions that understand the health benefits of parks. There's, there's public and private investment that's, that's uh, allowing for parks to be designed and built in ways that will promote that activity. You know, it's curious, I often think about this, <clears throat> the role of parks in cities, you know, like, incredibly important. Right, talk about that. Without a doubt, and you know, one of the uh, great benefits of uh, Newark as a historical city is the fact that, you know, back in the 1600s, it was initially developed with parks in mind. Um, you know, interestingly, Newark has two of the oldest city parks in the country. Branchbrook? Uh, no, Military Park Military and Washington Park. Not Branchbrook? The two of the three oldest parks in the country. Uh, and along with that, Essex County Park System is the oldest county park system in the country. And so there's a long history of parks in Newark. And thanks to the city government and those private institutions that I mentioned and the Trust for Public Land and many other partners, uh, there's renewed investment that's now happening to improve many of the existing parks that exist across the city and to create new parks like Newark Riverfront Park. What does it do for the quality of life in a city? I mean, we're literally over at NJIT and where you're talking about is just a few blocks away from here, close to the New Jersey Performing Arts Center where we also shoot programming, close to our partners at um, um, the public television station and JTV in the state. All, all, I mean, all this activity happening, multiple universities and colleges. But the idea of this riverfront being developed, what could it actually mean for this city? 
Well, you know, it's, uh, whether it's Newark Riverfront Park or some of the other city parks that we've worked to develop in the Central Ward, like Nat Turner Park or Jesse Allen Park, um, the, the power of parks is not just in how they're designed and built, but the, uh, their, uh, the opportunity there is for community civic engagement. And so many of the communities where these parks are being uh, are built are places where uh, the public has been somewhat disenfranchised and doesn't have the opportunity to feel as though they have a say in their, their neighborhood and their neighborhood's uh, future. And so the way we go about designing and building our parks, our city parks in, in cities across the country, including Newark, is through what we call a community or participatory design process. What does that really mean? And so uh, that includes um, stakeholder involvement, where the Trust for Public Land may have the expertise to design and build these parks, but we don't know what the community, community wants to does see. Does that also involve um, uh, schools, parks, uh, schools, uh, parks where there are where a school is there and a park's not there, you need the community involved? Absolutely, so there, there are a number of neighborhoods in the city of Newark where there isn't an existing park within easy walking distance of, of residential areas, and yet there are, there's a broad, dis, broadly distributed school system, obviously, in the city, and so those schoolyards that are typically just asphalt lots that serve as you know, the only outdoor recess space, but also the only parking lots for the faculty. We'll keep talking off there. Anthony, keep doing what you're doing. It's important for the city and the cities across this nation. Thank you, Anthony. Great. Good stuff. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJIT has been provided by TD Bank, PSE&G, RWJ, Barnabas Health, The Fidelco Group, The North Ward Center, Prudential Financial's Global Communications Department, and by Verizon. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato at NJIT has been produced in cooperation with Fios One News.